this out. So he is writing the prompt. It is generating the image in the region he specified. So the width and height have been transferred to the model. Now there's another one generating on the same canvas. So the first one was the baby Yoda. This one is the galaxy with the bright stars. Here comes another galaxy. So now what he's doing is he's kind of filling in this background here and he's going to go into in painting mode. So instead of, you know, creating, he's in painting and now the model, the in painting model is trying to predict what should fill in that empty space and as an artist he's just kind of moving around and populating this out and yeah, pretty cool interface. So this is kind of a look at the future of what these these UIs will look like when we have diffusion, generation, and then in painting, and it's all integrated on the same canvas. So that's fun to watch. Uh, I will link that one in the description below. Another thing to look at is this was a pink roof single floored rectangular out outbuilding, but it gave him a blue shoe. So as you can see, I came down here and explained it's about the C of G scale. He added negative um, seven instead of seven. So he put it at negative seven. He got the inverse of what's supposed to be on that C of G scale. So kind of fun. You can send prompts to people with a negative weighted value and kind of rickroll them. Another thing, image modification with stable diffusion. So they're finding image to image translation work. So this is like an MS Paint drawing. And now you've got kind of a photorealistic scene. I'll expand on that. So circles owl and they have to specify an owl perched on a branch but effectively the owl is in the orientation that you drew with just a couple of circles um, GUI so GRIS GUI is going to be for Windows allows you to run the stable diffusion locally um, and have control over all the parameters uh, let's see what else yep a little bit more of this owl here he added a little bit more texture and then the model was able to draw it a little bit better. But really fun for kids, just draw it. Another thing that's doing, let's see, it's upscaling scenes into photorealistic views. So this is like Laura Croft, like a video game, and then looks like real life. So imagine when these models run in real time, you can literally um, enhance or change old video games into a new better looking ones. Um, so yeah, a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on in this Reddit thread. I'll link it, here's another one, but they transferred the video game into a, a retro sci-fi art style. So, so much you can do with these. Uh, image to image stable diffusion, this is a collab that's already up and running. This is a repository where you have an interactive command line interface. So it's like the DreamBot that was in the beta, but it has image to image in it. Um, this is remove safety filter in five seconds. So locally, you don't have to have that clip interrogator. Allows you to reverse engineer the, the images. So you input the image. This is like image to prompt, and you get predictions on what um, words may have been used in the prompt and the percentage of styles and and all that fun stuff. So uh, let's see. This is a music video. You can see it's changing. So he animated this using Andre Karpathy's notebook. Um, this is free. You can download it and animate yourself. It does take some compute. Um, but yeah, this is, they're walking through the latent space. So think about like um, disco diffusion and some of those animations. Um, this is a prompting cheat sheet. I'll link this one as well, give you some ideas, but go next level with this thing. Look at this prompt a mania. So you basically have your prompt. You can add, you know, all these details, um, camera, lenses. Okay, now I've got that lens on there and this one. And why would you use two lenses? I don't know. Um, concepts, essence. You know, so number system, I mean, they have all of these different things and you're just adding them to your prompt, artist styles, okay, I want Warhol on there, you know, and then you go in and you, you can 
modify the parameters, you know, the steps in the CFG scale, and, and then when you're done, you just copy it. And then boom, there they all are. You know? And so this type of interface is gonna be, become more common um, as well. And then uh, the last thing I'll show you is, I actually did use um, image to prompt. So it gave me a prediction of what it thought this was. And uh, this was my original prompt. So it's a lot different, but as a prompt engineer, I will say that it does give you some idea of how the model understands concepts. And so it does know this is a chihuahua. It sees this as a colorful surface. And what I thought was fascinating is it used iridescent twice, which is actually kind of a technique that engineers use to weight their prompts. So it, I don't know, maybe it is, it is kind of prompt engineering, but we will, we will continue inspecting these uh, models as they come through and, and playing with all the different prompts. All right, well, that was my update for today. Um, thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing your generations.